Hey everybody. So I am rebuilding the injectors for my Ford F-250 Super Duty 2000 7.3 Power Stroke. Woo! There's a great video that I'll link in the description below on how to rebuild these injectors, but I figured I'd make another one to share some of the extra things that I learned while doing it. More information is better than less. The tools and stuff you're going to need are, I got this ultrasonic cleaner, I think it was a hundred bucks off Amazon, and Master Stages Clean 2020. This stuff is insane. This is the best. Sh like when this stuff is in there and it's heated up and it's and it's sonicking, it will clean stuff insane. You will see how good it cleans. Also, I got the Riff Raff Diesel Kit Rebuild Kit that can't that I think I got from Bitterroot because it comes with this uh, fixture and this nice little tool. So you're gonna need the fixture, the pin, this tool, this uh, tool which comes with it that I have mounted on my. Uh, half inch ratchet, torque wrench, air gun, some brake clean. Uh, this, you don't need a Leatherman. I, I'm just using this because it has this uh, little uh, hex that I can use for a, uh, a drive. Um, the tool comes with this little, tool comes with this little hex bit, which is a two millimeter. It also comes with these splined torques which are not, they're not the same. I think they have a different bit in them. They have a different shape, so use these. There's a larger one that I've mounted here and a smaller one that I've mounted here. And then it also comes with this little tool for removing the, uh, the screw. There's one screw that you have to remove. So I mounted all these bits in these, uh, these like screw gun holders so that I can slide them in this, uh, this Craftsman screwdriver or put them in this. Also a adjustable wrench, some tweezers, this O-ring pick, which is also on Amazon, um, a feeler gauge, a paint pen if you want to mark each injector. Tweezers, yeah, I mentioned tweezers. First step is disassembly. So I'm gonna be working on injector two here. You can see how this is so jacked up. Not really jacked up, but it's covered with carbon and this is all dirty and I marked two on the top here. So you put it in your fixture, turn it until the pin engages. So now, now, now you can move it. All right, disassembly. First things first, we're gonna take these screws off. So that is the small uh, spline bit. Use your, uh, use some down pressure and this, and a wrench. These, these are not like really on there that hard. So it's not like a crisis. And then use a screwdriver to back out the screws. I have this tray that I got off of McMaster. I think I would, wish I had gotten two of them so that I could lay all, I could probably do all the injectors faster. But um, keep your stuff organized because otherwise you are going to misorient it and it's going to cause a problem. Screws in the screw tray. Okay, then your solenoid comes off. Little oil on that. This is not gonna get washed. You just clean it up with a, you know, like a rag. You don't need to put this in the wash. Then you get the spacer. This also, do not wash this. With this caustic stuff that I got for the sonic cleaner, I put one of these in, it's aluminum, and it just started getting eaten away which was causing problems. It messed the whole fluid up. Fortunately, it did not change the dimension. The critical dimension is the thickness of this. So I measured it. It was a couple thousandths over the other ones. So I, I sanded off some of the corrosion. It, it looked like it actually built up corrosion and it didn't eat it away. So do not put this in the parts washer. You can just clean this up with a rag. Okay, this is your poppet uh, armature, I think is what it's called. So for this, you will use the supplied tool. Put that in your in your uh, screwdriver, and then hold it with your crescent wrench. If you don't, this will just turn because it's just it's just attached to a uh, a valve there. Don't try to use another bit for this. Like this, the biggest lesson of this whole thing is use the right tool for the job. This is so pleasurable because I have the sonic cleaner, 
parts wash, this rebuild kit. You know, you spend a little extra money, but then you can just relax and do the work instead of cursing and breaking stuff. Okay, so this is this is gonna get washed. So we will set this down. This screw is not gonna be used. So we'll put this in the, the bin for stuff that we don't need anymore. Okay, now we got four more screws. This is the larger bit. These are a little tighter, but also not, not a problem to break loose. And then there's spring pressure under here. So as you remove these screws, this little plate will come up, but it's not going to explode off and kill you. When I did the first injector, I did it a lot slower than this. I, I watched the other video, I followed the instructions, I took my time, but once I kind of memorized the procedure, I sort of set up myself an assembly line where I have one set of, I have one injector in the parts washer, one injector in the uh, sonic cleaner, one injector at disassembled so that I could go faster. All right, so this spring, you're not gonna, the spring was in there, it came off, you're not gonna use that so that goes in the refuse. This plate has this thing in here. I will show you that in a second. This is going to get, this pulls out. And then oil is going to come out of here a little bit. This is going to get washed. We'll set that down. This, this is not going to get washed. I mean, you could wash it. It just, I don't feel the need to because it, it's not like critical to the operation being clean. It's just oily. This is going to get set down. Okay. Then you have to break this loose. This is on pretty tight because you're gonna put it back at 75 foot-pounds. So use this tool. And just break it loose. <clears throat> and it is also spring-loaded, so as you, uh, if you push down, it's a little easier. Pop this guy off here. This is, has some oil in it that I'm spilling all over my hand. Drain that out. So we just basically got rid of the oil side of things. This is gonna get washed, but we have to remove some O-rings. So we'll do all the O-ring removal at the same time. There's a little pin in here. This is also going to get washed. Spring, you're going to reuse this spring. Do not throw this spring away. I don't wash this spring because I just doesn't, I don't feel like it needs it. All of them have been super clean. I'm putting this in the tray bin with the, uh, the little hold down. Okay. Inside here, this is where things get exciting. There are two pins. So this actually jumped out when I pulled the, uh, the top part off. So remove these pins. These I don't put in the parts washer. I just soak them in some carb cleaner. These are locating pins. They're not, oops. they're not, um, they don't need to be dead clean. Okay, so now all those other parts in there, you can basically just dump out. So what do we got here? We got two short pins. They are going in the carb cleaner. We have this little plate. We have 
two more long pins. These All these pins are interchangeable except for the short ones, so you can reuse the, the long ones in any order. This is your cylinder. See, look at this. This is why you rebuild injectors. This is a piece of the spring that's just sitting in there. Who knows what that could cause? This is probably why my truck's not working. This is going in the refuse. This is gonna get cleaned. This little pin is gonna get cleaned. This spring you're gonna replace, obviously, because it just broke. Uh, so this is going in the refuse. This is your pin. This is gonna get cleaned. This plate has a little ball and this little plate here, this is gonna get cleaned. The ball is going in the refuse because the kit comes with new balls. Uh, you use these flat tweezers for the balls. And then there's another top plate. I'm, I'm not sure if the orientation matters on this because it's symmetrical, but there are wear marks. The guy in the video was pretty good about mentioning the wear marks. So you can put it back even after it's clean in the right order. Okay, so this thing has a ball right there. And you get that out. Oop. You just slide this clamp off like that. And the ball comes out. And that's also going to refuse because there's a replacement. This is going to get cleaned. This is going to get cleaned. Okay, so then you have your injector nozzle. So I just press it down and it falls out. You're going to you're going to uh, throw away this copper washer. Okay, so now here are all your here are your parts. Um next step is o-ring removal. All right. This is one of the injectors that I finished. And I had already removed all the O-rings from the other injectors, but when before you before you get started, basically remove this O-ring, this O-ring. There's three things in this groove. There's an O-ring, there's a square O-ring, and then there's a metal uh, seal. So you can take all these off because they're going to get replaced. Uh, but then there's also O-ring on the outside here. There's an O-ring on the inside here below this uh, this cylinder. And then there's an O-ring inside here. So first we've got to press this thing out. Use this tool, it slides in there. Just some pressure, then it pops out. This thing has a washer that comes off. It's just stuck there with oil. These are gonna get washed. You can kind of see like a brown o-ring in there. What I I lost my pick, but I've been using these tweezers that have an angle on them. You just get in there and you can pull that bad boy out. That's going to get thrown away in the refuse pile. This is going to get washed. Okay, then we have the green O-ring. This is the same thing. I just use the tweezers. You could use a pick. Just be careful not to mess up the, the landing. Also going to get thrown away. Okay, the O-ring in here is trick. Actually, before we get that O-ring, we have to get this thing out. So what you do is you basically take this thing, you slam it against the table, and eventually this will start moving. Slam it against like something soft, like there's wood under here. Once it starts to move, you can take a socket. Where is the socket? And that and that'll uh, 
give it some place to fall into. See, it fell right out. This is gonna get washed. Okay, you can kind of see an O-ring in there. This one is the hardest one to remove I've found. Um, sometimes I've been able to get it out with just the hook. Sometimes I've had to pierce it. Again, be careful of your landings, but the way these tweezers have been bending, I don't think this metal is harder than the injector metal. Yeah. So once it's out there, you can just grab it and pull it out. This is going to get washed. Okay, so that's disassembly. We got all the O-rings out. We got all our parts. I'm going to put them in the parts washer. Okay, so we're loading the parts in the parts washer. We got the lower barrel, the upper barrel, this plate. This little guy goes in the little basket. This little guy goes in the little basket. This little tiny thing goes in the little basket. This little, this bigger thing goes in the little basket. This can just sit there. This is the pin. This goes in the little basket. This is the, a smaller pin. This goes in the little basket. This thing goes in the basket. They're going to wash this, 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 this. Definitely your nozzle because this thing is gross. And this guy. Remember, we, we're soaking the pins. This stuff is going in the parts washer. Remember, do not put that aluminum piece in here. So I have it set at uh, 38 degrees Celsius, 41. This thing is not, the temperature does not seem to be super uh, accurate here. I think I had it boiling at one point. Um, it's definitely not as cool as it was yesterday. I mean, it's cooler than it was yesterday. Uh, 30 minutes on the sonic clean. And we're sonicking. All right, parts are coming out of the parts washer. This water could be hot. It's not that hot right now. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is, isn't this just like joy? It's so clean, I love this thing. Okay, let's get these parts out of here. So right now they are covered with the parts washer fluid, which which in my experience, it's hard, has, it will harden into like kind of a, a film, like a, like a, like a glaze, like a, kind of like a lacquer. So that, that's why I wash the parts after they're in the parts washer. So this goes into there, 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 this goes into there. And then I, there's this little basket here. I'm not going to wash the pins because they might fall through the holes in here. But these won't, so I'm gonna put them in there. Okay, then this goes in there. Gunk carb cleaner. Let that soak. This is part of, so now, you know, I'll put the next injector in the parts washer, in the sonic cleaner, and this is gonna soak during that, and I sort of got this whole process going. This is like in Julia Child where they put one cake in the oven, 
and then they pull out a different cake from a different oven. So, so I just put injector two stuff in the sonic cleaner and injector three stuff was in the the carburetor cleaner. And uh, if you're doing multiple injectors at once, I found it was helpful to I have this little box that has the, the little oil thing and the screws from the, the engine. And I just kind of sit this box where the injector is in its course, in its journey through this cleaning process. Like two is sitting on the sonic cleaner. All the other ones are behind the, the finish injectors. It just helps you keep track of stuff. I'm not sure if it actually matters. Uh, if, I mean, I think maybe the parts wear into themselves, but I mean, it's interchangeable. Like really, I think you should be, I mean, don't, don't, don't try it unless you know, but, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my guess is you could just disassemble all these injectors and put them all back together and in a big pile and it would probably be fine. But uh, I think methodical is the way to do this. So we'll pull out the parts. Oh, geez. All right, I am going to wash my hands, move the other parts in the sonic cleaner over to this, and clean up these with air and rag to get all the, the goo and any kind of flash and stuff off. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, yeah, the sonic cleaner did a really good job. There's just a little bit of goo in these O-ring grooves that uh, it's probably loose. It's just not... It just didn't float away. So a little bit of scotch bright. I think this is, the red stuff is like zero steel wool. Just get those clean. See, nice and clean. And then I use a little bit of brake cleaner to wash away all that gross sh and high pressure air. See, nice and clean inside. Just be careful when you're using the air that you don't blow one of these parts across the room. So far I've been lucky, but you know, better, better hold it. Less air longer is better than more air and you're losing a part. With the nozzle, if all the stuff doesn't come off in the sonic cleaner, just, you know, scotch bright that tip. And I found that you want to make sure, I mean, these holes are so small. I don't know how these, this truck even ran with all this carbon on it. But, uh, one thing I noticed that if you, if you put some brake cleaner in there, you know, it's going to drip out, and then if you blow air into it, I don't know if you saw that, I'll do it again. The, uh, the stuff blasts out those little holes and makes, look, lets you know they're all clean. Pretty cool. Alright, we got all our parts blown off, clean, ready for reassembly. So I have a, a tray of clean motor oil, uh, Rotella. 15W40, that's the good stuff. I have a tray of diesel fuel, which has some, some grime in it, but eh, I should probably dump that out. Nah, it's fine. And then the, my carb cleaner with the pins in it. So I'm gonna put this piece, I think this is a poppet valve, in the oil, the spring in the oil, this pin in the oil, these two things, put this back together, in the oil, uh, this side down. This little guy just sitting in the oil. Uh, then the all these little small parts, they go in the diesel. Also, we're going to need a new big spring in the oil. Actually, Yes. New small spring in the diesel. We're gonna use a screw and two balls, which I'm gonna leave in here so they don't they don't run away. The reason we're doing this is because this stuff, there's very tight tolerances on this, and so having some oil on it will lubricate it going in and for startup and stuff like that. 
and the diesel because oh, sort of similar diesel has a little bit of lubricating quality and it'll help the parts go together and clean off any like last bits of, of dust and grime. So I like will pick them out and shake them off. All right, let's do some reassembly. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the nozzle and take the pin and insert it into the nozzle. It's very tight tolerance, but it should slide free. I one of my injectors, because I, I had the order reversed of my cleaning process, it, that gunk built up. And so this was actually, it actually is a, was tighter and I don't think that's good. So I had to take them all apart and clean them again. Your nozzle's in there. Next, we're gonna take the two short pins. They go in these holes here. Orientation does not matter. Next, we are going to take the barrel. Again, orientation does not matter, but they will fit in the pins only one way. Barrel's on. Careful so you don't drop this. All right, then we will take the, there's two discs. This is the larger disc. You can see how on one side it has a small circle. Well, on one side it has a small circle that sat against the needle and the other side it has wear marks from sitting against the spring. So we'll put that back in the same orientation. Just drop it in there. Double check that it's in there. Next, our spring. And the short pin. Okay, now we're gonna take two long pins, put them in these two holes. And on top of that, you can see the wear from the spring on this. So that side goes down. Again, there's only one orientation. Oops, I did it backwards. All right, next, that little disc right there. Ball number one. Where are my tweezers? Normally I would do this over the tray so the ball does not disappear. But for you people, I am going to take the risk. Ball in there. I'll get my second ball out. And then on top of this, there's the other plate. I believe orientation does not matter. It's the same on both sides, but you can see on this, there's like sort of a wear mark that matches that wear mark. So we're gonna put that bad boy right back like that. Okay, so this is the lower fuel section. Careful that this doesn't fall apart, but now you can basically just raise it up into the injector. Don't let it all come apart. Okay, so this is gonna go in that fixture and I'll work on the next part. Gotta reassemble this guy, put the ball in its little hole. Oh my God. That was scary. And put its clip back on. Make sure the ball is in that hole there. Like that, nice and tight. Okay, this is gonna go down in there. I found an easy way to do this is you spread your little tweezers apart. These two holes are gonna line up with those pins that are sticking out of the other thing. So let's take a look at that.
see how it kind of sat down there and when you twist the nozzle everything moves make sure that is a, is in there correctly so now that that is assembled we are going to put the spring that we oiled this is not a spring that um this is the original spring we're not replacing the spring and that pin that we oiled so this pin slide fits into that bottom piece and you want to make sure that it slides easily that's a nice fit and this is another area where the if any kind of varnish builds up it's not gonna be good okay now before we put that back together we got to reassemble the upper part so you got your internal o-ring kit one two not zero nine two four three from Red Hat, made in Italy, very nice. It's a very nice O-ring. We only use the best O-rings here. Vroom vroom, you hear my car, it goes so fast. Okay, I got oil on my fingers a little bit, so I'm just gonna make sure there's a little bit of oil on these guys. This O-ring goes in that groove. That is easy one. Pop that in by hand. Make sure it's seat, don't roll these. Uh-huh. Nice. Then this one, also pretty easy. This one goes in this groove. Little oil. I, these, these ones inevitably roll a teeny bit, but try to not to do it too bad. Make sure it retains, reforms its shape there. And now this one is the tricky one. This is going to go back in that groove that we pulled it out of. The way I do that is I get a little oil on it, jam it in there, push it all the way down, and then the top that's sticking up will start in the groove. See it? And then you just you pull it up into that groove. It wants to go home. Sometimes it takes a little wiggling. See, now it's like partially in the groove and then you can pull up that side that's down and it is in. A little pinky in there. Okay, so then you take your uh, plunger thing that's, that was oiled and stick it in there. And then I use this tool to seat it. Nice. So now this piece is ready to go on the injector. But before we do that, we're going to take these two last pins and put them inside. Pin number one. Pin number two. We take this guy. It's gonna, it's gonna sit on those pins. When it's in there, you should feel the bottom turn. You should not be able to turn them independently. Get your pin in here. Make sure those threads start correctly. A little downward pressure on the spring that's inside. Okay, then we're gonna take our tool off our ratchet. Put it on our torque ratchet, 75 foot-pounds. I put a little oil on that o-ring so that it compresses nice and seats. Get it tight. Ooh. And then once it requires some force to move, we do one smooth motion to torque it. As my friend Nish says. 
There we go, 75 foot-pounds. Okay, now don't forget to do what I forgot to do once, which was put this guy back on. Because then you have to take up the top again. The way this goes on is countersinks up, angled part, mashes this hole. I call this the front, basically. Now we take our plunger, Give it a little twist, it's from the oil. Make sure that slides smoothly. A little bit more oil here. That's what I'm talking about. And our spring. So a little oil on the inside of this. This piece and this washer go together. And then from the bottom, so countersinks up, bottom this goes in here and then I just use that same tool to push it in make sure it's seated well then this whole thing is gonna go down on this now make sure that this ejection hole is also in line with this front piece all right now we got this plate on We're gonna put in the four screws that go up there. This is the bigger of the bits. There's a spring under there, so make sure this is lined up. Compress a little. Screw in the screws. And then we'll use the Leatherman to tighten it up. I just give it like a little, little tweak. Don't reef. It's not a reef. All right. Next, your poppet armature. Oh, this looks like it might have been ground. Hmm. This has to sit off of here by between two and four thousandths of an inch. And I know from experience with the other ones that all these, all these uh, injectors need a little shimmage. Got my one thousandths shim. No, just one, not stuck together. Put your shim on the top of there. This is going to go on facing. Uh, the lines are parallel to the. Or the lines are perpendicular to this this length here. And then your new screw. Make sure that goes through the shim. Now, in the other video, there's a great technique that I am copying here, which is you take your spacer, turn it this way, put these screws in, and that gives you a reference line to make sure this is perpendicular and square. And you're gonna use your little uh, two millimeter hex. Get that screw in there. And then we'll tighten it and we'll use this wrench to hold it this steady, nice and lined up. Again, no reefing. Now you wanna check, check every one. Get your feeler gauges, four fits. Um, and we'll test to see if it's too much. Oh, five. It's too much. We'll take that shim out, actually. Five does not fit now. Four barely fits. That's good. That's a lot better. Now the spacer goes on, and your 
solenoid. Again, solenoid plug in line with this irregular shaped piece. Get those threads started. And this is the smaller of the spline bits. Tighten these guys up. And this is injector three, so I just keep my labels. All right, injector is assembled. Next is to put the outside O-rings on. All right, Alliant Power. AP0001. Whoa, that's not good. That is not good. That nozzle is broke. What the hell happened there? Lordy Lou. Fast forward two and a half days, $38 and $78 of shipping later. I don't know where this happened and I'll probably say something if, it, if I did notice in the video, but I don't know if I knocked it or if there was thermal shock or if it had a weird compression or something, but it just totally jacked up this nozzle. Fortunately, there's a place on the internet that I ordered replacements from, a replacement. A guy overnighted it, really nice. I'll put a link in the description, I forget it right now. All right, so last step is O-rings. The kit has metal O-ring, square, or metal clip, square O-ring, round, large O-ring, big pink O-ring, small orange O-ring, and the copper seal. So, first things first, clip goes on this groove at the bottom. And I put a little bit of oil on my finger, get a little bit of slipperiness on the square o-ring. That goes next, all the way down, right above the clip. Then the round o-ring. So there's this one groove has three different items in it. Metal clip, square, purple. Now this is why it's okay if your fingernails are just a teeny bit longer than trimmed flush, which I usually like so I don't catch them on anything. But this pink o-ring requires quite a bit of force and you don't want to roll them. So you just Yeah, you just push it down in there. I think if your fingernails were too long, they'd snap off and it would be a big bummer. But if they're just the right length and you're, they're strong because you eat your veggies and your steaks and a love and life, then you'll be able to push these O-rings on, no problem. Put the orange one on. Okay, so the last thing is the sealing washer. And what I do, because that other video said it, I like the idea, put a little sticky grease because you don't want this thing falling off your nozzle while it's... uh you know, when you're inserting it. And this, I'm keeping, there's a little ridge here. I'm keeping that, see how this is like a little trough? I want to keep that ridge up on all the injectors. This is, I guess this is fragile. Don't break your tip again. And then that just slides down there. And that's a finished injector. And now you can put them all in. So uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope this added some detail beyond the other video, which was excellent. And thanks for watching.